is Joseph Coco. I'm here at ALA 2015, the annual conference, on behalf of Becky Holborn's Art Process Blog, Yvonne Track and Natasu. If you could introduce yourself, please. My name is Thomas Estler. Okay, and what brought you to ALA this year, Thomas? Uh, you know, I've uh, written uh, a comic book, and I'm trying to introduce it to librarians uh, all around the country and see if they're interested. Fantastic. Can you show us a little bit of it? Sure. What's it called? Sure. It's called Abolitionista. Um, it, uh, I wrote it with the help of the FBI and a lot of other experts. It's uh, about human trafficking, and it gives it teaches kids about human trafficking and gives them proven tools to protect themselves. I, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but there's an estimated up to 300,000 American children trafficked every year into yeah. the sex industry, and the average age is 12. So the goal of the comic book is really prevention. It's about reaching kids before they're victimized and uh, by empowering them with tools that they'll be able to use for the rest of their lives. Okay, and how's it being distributed currently? Um, you know, it's uh, on Amazon. We also have our own website, Abolitionista Press. Uh, dot, dot com that we sell it through okay. and yeah and what was the motivation for the book is this something that is personal to you and you've been wanting to write about for a while wow, that is such a a uh, great question you know I I have to tell you Joseph that I didn't naturally know that I was supposed to do things like contribute to my community and make okay. the world a better place yeah. and someone had to teach that to me and it took it, years and years for that that lesson to sink in, but when it did, I kind of I just like uh, randomly asked myself, what do I care about? What issue do I care about? What, or what do I care about that I, you know, expend some of yeah. my life, you know, what helping? Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. And immediately my brain yells back, human trafficking. I'm not sure I knew that much about it, yeah. except I think instinctually I understood that it meant unspeakable suffering in it that needed to be yeah, stopped. Yeah, kids' lives make this yeah. story, basically. Yeah, exactly. Or kids and adults, really. After that, I think my eyes kind of were opened, unconsciously opened, looking for some way for me to get involved and make a difference. And then a friend of mine who is fighting tra uh, human trafficking in the New York City court system, because she, she's the head of a department called Crimes Against Children, Sex Crimes, she told okay. me of an event she had gone to with survivors, girls that had been rescued. Uh, from human trafficking and she comes back and she tells me you know Thomas they're all reading comic books someone should write a comic book about this issue and uh, immediately for me I bought together something that I love doing I'm a writer and this thing that I inexplicably care so much about this issue of human trafficking boom and it was like you know I was struck by lightning and I yeah. knew this was something uh, that I had to do. Yeah. So. And there's certainly a lot of visuals that can be involved in human trafficking, but it, it's also a heavy sort of scenario. So how did you um, how did you convey the importance and cruelty of these sort of things without uh, yeah. per, without creating it in a disgusting environment? I yeah. guess you would say. An you know, educational from, sort of uh, right. way of presenting it, but still right. showing how terrible it actually is. You know, I think that's uh, a really great insight because for us, we're trying to get this into schools, yeah. and our obstacle is is that is to make this acceptable to caring adults like teachers and parents and civic leaders and school teachers, and sure. their response when they're here when they hear about a comic book about human trafficking is, "I'm going to keep that away from my 12-year-old," even though that is. That is the age group that's most vulnerable to being yeah. trafficked. And so they're, they're made even more vulnerable by the adults around them. So what we had to do was we had to create a manga that was, that was our challenge, to create a, a manga, a comic book that was acceptable to adults. And sure. um, so what we did was we created kind of a Nancy Drew story, two best friends, uh, one of them disappears, and the other one, like a uh, young detective, starts gathering the clues uh, to solve the mystery of her friend's disappearance. And all those clues are the most common warning signs of yeah. someone being uh, trafficked. So fully, the first half is really about gathering clues and slowly getting information about kind of this horrific underground world yeah. of human trafficking. So you're slowly, you're not in, you're not in the, the, the uh, 
the horror of it. You're, you're in the, let's gather some information about it, and slowly gathering, and you never, you never do, um, witness really, wit yes, yeah, so yeah. we, you never witness, like, really, the, the most gruesome and unspeakable and unthinkable parts of that situation, which is a 12-year-old yeah. being sold, you know, which I, I think for many of us is just this appalling, appalling thought. So, you know, what happens is that this detective friend finds where her friend's at and does everything she can to get her out of the situation, and it's, it's through friendship. And we all, I think another thing that makes this comic book different is we explain this, um, this crime to children through the idea of, or, or the subject matter of slavery. This, the word slavery is, I think, maybe even a better term for human trafficking than yeah. human trafficking. It's which certainly to explain to kids who have yeah. a much better understanding of what slavery is than trafficking. Yeah, at 12, they're probably learning about yeah, slavery, slavery right right then in school. So if, if you're, certainly they understand the word, the language, yeah. and maybe but they're even studying. Presented in the context of history as though this isn't happening now. And it might not be literally right. happening, but something very similar is happening. Well, and, and I think that a lot of people, a lot of people, um, politicians and people in the, the legislature, they, they will admit that, that, there is, that there is slavery going around. There, there are people that are being forced, especially children, forced to, uh, you know, work in a lot of different, um, uh, you know, like crop industries. Uh, that have to involve humans picking. Yeah, uh, lots of pesticides yes. as well. Probably. Yeah, and also uh, uh, children um, being forced to fight in armies, um, you know, certainly without pay, and also in the most dangerous part of, of that, that uh, kind of uh, uh, situation. Yeah. You know, like, they're the ones at the front of the lines, you know, put at the front of the line, so if there's a, a landmine, they're the ones that get hit. Yeah, you know, because they're seen as expendable uh, because expendable. they can't actually fight. Yeah. Which it, is the worst possible way to view a child. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The, the horror, you know, the horrible situations that children are put in. So, what, I, what we do is, in the comic book, um, one of the main characters is doing a, uh, the main character is, is doing a report on um, uh, slavery, and she finds a picture of her first ancestor brought over to the New World as a slave. Yeah. And um, as soon as she discovers that that ancestor actually becomes a character in the comic book. And um, when our main character is trafficked and hits her lowest point, um, of course she thinks of her trafficker as her boyfriend, you know. Um, this ancestor comes to her and it describes to her what it was like for her to be a slave and it's only then that the main character realizes that she's been enslaved by this guy that she's been thinking of yeah. uh, as a boyfriend and it's only then that she can break away. It sounds like you did a fantastic job of writing this and making it accessible to um, parents yeah. and possibly, hopefully even, even kids who are yeah. interested in the subject or hopefully aren't experiencing it. But Yeah, I, I think so. We're, and we're coming out with volume two, which I mean even happier about and it, okay. we're, we're kind of creating it so that it, it's another great story uh, but that it will be useful for street outreach workers that they can put it into the hands of um, homeless kids who are the most vulnerable to human trafficking it's like sure. the most vulnerable population there is and they're not going to throw it away uh, they're going to read it they're, they're going to keep it and it allows um, street outreach workers the opportunity to engage with them like what do you think about the story and what do you think about the main character and, and what did you think she should have done to you know to survive on the streets you know and and uh, uh, things like that so. okay. and you're currently looking for an artist for the second volume or that's no, already done we, no we we have most of the artwork already done we have a fantastic uh, artists, we're glad to say Flora Lee out of New York City. We looked all around the world on DeviantArt.com, sure. and and we were seriously looking at people in Brazil and you know yeah. everywhere. And uh, and then I found this artist, and I thought for sure she was in China. No, <laughs> she was down the street from me, and we we had a real interview, and she has a big personality, and oh my gosh, and she she's uh, she 
really captures something about uh, the, the, the gravitas of this, you know, like the characters, they have such extraordinary expression, you know. She gets comedy because, you know, it is dark and I try and put that in there and she gets, uh, she, she really gets, you know, sometimes the stoniness of characters that have to go through with something that they don't want to go through, and, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, so I'm delighted with this artist, Flora, Flora Lee. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear you also tried to put a little bit of comedy in there because I've personally, yeah. I worked for the government briefly and yeah. um, we had to take human trafficking, um, I don't know what you would call it, but assessments almost, like yeah. just introducing you, this is how you spot human trafficking, yeah. if you're yeah. in a restaurant right. or wherever. And they were pretty boring, if I say so yeah. myself. So it's great yeah. to hear that you can create a comic, making also make it entertaining and also yeah. teach you how to spot signs of this and the seriousness yeah. of the situation. You know, because I'm a writer, the, the number one thing I want to do is be entertaining, to be engaging. Like, yeah. I want to rivet people. That's the number one thing I want to do. And suddenly, I have another number one thing I want to do, and, and that is educate people about this issue and, sure. and actually equip kids to, to know how to protect themselves. But I have to tell you, it kills me. If I thought that I was writing something and it was boring, a manual, I would yeah. die. <laughs> I would just absolutely die. So, okay. yeah. Well, I, is this um, your first day at uh, ALA, or did you come yesterday? As no, well? no, this was my first day. Okay. Yeah. And what's been your experience? You're just attending the convention as um, as a guest, correct? Not, I I am. I'm networking a lot, so I, I go into panels. And I, you know, I'm very loud and I talk to them and I ask questions because I'm also about to uh, propose a panel for New York Comic Con. Okay. And so I'm actually looking for uh, people to put on the panels that I'm proposing there. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm also trying to figure out um, who I need to contact with. Uh, of course, this is a great convention because I want librarians to start stocking this, right. you know? And so... This is a great place to, you know, to do that and to really figure out how to connect with this industry in the best possible way. And so I'm learning a lot, uh, meeting a lot of important people like yourself, Joseph. <laughs> and uh, um, I'm, it's uh, this beautiful place, as you can see. Sure. Um, so you're coming from New York. New York City. Nice. It's brutally hot there, and it's <laughs> so it's like they, somebody turned the air conditioner on out here. So yeah, <laughs> it's great. Okay, and uh, where we can also find the upcoming volume um, online on Amazon. Yeah, yeah you know, right. Uh, I I, uh, I also have a website, um, but I want to be honest with you, Joseph. Yeah, I don't. I don't check it as much as, as I should have about people that are buying. So I think I'm going to shut that down until I find somebody who wants to take over my yeah, e-commerce site. Because yeah. I've got too much to do. You know, I'm doing workshops at schools and okay, that's homeless great. shelters. And you, you said you were interested in contacting creators, writers, or artists who um, have dealt with the subject matter of bullying in some form. That's uh, right. How would they reach out to you? Oh, uh, yes. If some viewers... Um, Primarily artists are, are viewing the video, so some uh, people might have stories that they've created or are interested in creating. Yes. I'd love to share with you and with the public at uh, New York Comic Con. Fantastic. And that's, you know, I'm, I'm trying to create uh, panels around the idea that comic books uh, can really uh, deal with the issues that are most crucial to the lives of the children and that comic books can have the power of really uh, empowering kids to live more successful lives, uh, more powerful lives, more inspired lives, you know. And so I'm, I'm creating these kind of comic books. And I, if you're uh, a comic book creator that has created something like that, I'd love for you to be on a panel with me. You can uh, contact me through freedomladder at gmail.com. Freedom Ladder, like freedom. Yeah. And ladder, like, like ladder, yeah. freedomladder at gmail.com. Freedom Ladder is okay. the name of my organization that, that, that uh, distributes this. All right, thank you, and I hope you have a good ALA. Oh my gosh, Joseph, you're awesome.